Okay, all you movers and shakers in the world of motocross, particularly in the UK, uh, welcome back to another Talk Moto podcast. Don't single out the UK here. Well, predom- predominantly, we are talking to UK riders in this episode, Wobs, oh. and we've done a lot. Of course, we're international, and we are. We've got a lot of guests. Yeah, yeah. Over oh, the right, next right. couple of years. Why don't you neck it? Um. Yeah, so here we are. It feels like it's been ages since we've done one of these wobs because we've been... We've been on tour, haven't we? We've been on out a little bit. We did them at the events and we did it at um, Talon. We haven't been in the office for a bit. I went to have a bit of a dust up before we came. Yeah, in. we've had a few people, a few mess- people messaging saying, you know, where have you been, what are you doing? But we're, we're busy blokes. We're in we're in the industry. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, Keep off season busy. now. We've got nothing to do now. We're bored. I wish that was true. Oh, off season. Yeah, sorry, I was yeah. straight away. You know, yeah, crack no, on, no, crack on. <laughs> I wish it was the off season. I mean, it's the worst time of the year. Yeah. It's flat out for, oh. for us. Yeah. There you go. He, he's kind of already introduced himself, but let's, uh, let's bring him in. Uh, Justin Morris is our guest for this episode. Former um, British Championship Grand Prix runner. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Did the bit. Right. Before we Been get around. cracking. Schoolboy champion. Before we get cracking, big thanks to Talon for the yeah. continued support. Always um, good. We're going to touch base at the end of this podcast. We'll have to say what we've got coming up oh. in the winter months because obviously off season is not an off season for us all. <laughs> no. So we're no. all going to talk about our plans for 25. It has ramped up a little bit. Just a bit for all of us. Um, I'm going to dive in with the very first question. Who gave you the name Boris? Um, so that goes back to <laughs> Paul Malin. Right. Oh. Paul Malin did. So um, when I rode for Kawasaki with Paul and Dave Thorpe back in, I don't know, whenever it was. That must have been like 91-ish. So I, I, you were schoolboy. Well, you were top no, 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 no. I was I was adult. So it's actually gone into – it'll take me into the next bit or whatever we talk about past histories. But, yeah, so I was kind of like, I don't know, taking from schoolboys into pro racing. And um, I was in the pro group with the pro team with Thorpey and uh, and who else was it? I think I'm not sure if Brian Wheeler might have been there as well. Tony Marshall about then? Mm, no, he followed after. No, you yeah. But anyway, we it was myself and Paul. So Alec Wright was obviously our boss back then. Yeah, and uh, he came up with this amazing idea to send us all. To a guy called Lofty Wiseman. Oh, SAS boy. SAS. Mental as a box of frogs. Oh, toughest week of my life. Yeah, he's local to it, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he thought it'd be really good, Alec, to go and um, put us on an SAS training camp for a week in the Brecon Beacons as a bonding exercise. A oh, bonding exercise. Okay. With our So mechanics went as well. Um, so Did they? Uh, yeah, they, what and they had to do the training. Yeah, yeah it was oh, honest to God. I, 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 it, I wouldn't have been happy with that. It, I wouldn't have been happy as a writer. This, this scarred me for life. Um, because that guy wasn't he one of the ones that went in the Iranian embassy? He was yeah. one of them, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he was swinging through the windows. Yeah, no, no, I, I've, I've spoke to him about it. He yeah. was like, well, so it was pre season, kind of October, November, or whatever. So there we are. Well, no, oh. sorry, I've jumped, I've jumped ship a little bit there. So beforehand, we obviously had to get ourselves sorted out to wear appropriate clothing while you're there. So I'm at home. I'm probably only, I, I was, what, 16. 14, 15, 16, yeah. around about then. So mum took me down to... Um, Army and Navy stores. Army and Navy store in <laughs> Gloucester. <laughs> <laughs> and got me decked out from head to toe. Full camo. Oh, mate, I had this freaking knife like this. I had a compass in it. It had the lot. I was head to toe, mate. Brand fire new, <laughs> like talk about all the gear. It was amazing. Like I looked incredible. Well, I thought I looked incredible. I'm sure you did. Anyway, I've rocked up there, and um, and Mela just looked at me and was like, "You look like Arnold Schwarzenegger." <laughs> and it went from Morris Schwarzenegger then to Boris Schwarzenegger. Right. Ah, okay. So there I am, but. Obviously, you know, people that are in the army are wearing that stuff every day. And this is clean out the wrappers. Oh, so mate, I've the... still got pins in the damn thing. <laughs> they found clips in the back of it. Oh, no. Mate, the creases were perfect. Oh. <laughs> I'm walking around this place. And honest to God, that week, that, that really broke us. Yeah. I've never known anything like it. It wasn't just about just being there. We had to 
completely live and breathe it for a week. So they took everything off of us. Um, we had to make our own shelters. Lofty would get us up in the morning. We'd go down to the River Y. So cold water therapy is a real big thing now. now yeah. Everyone freaking loves it. Well, back then... I won't go that far. He had... Well, I know. No, I, I think this me. is what scared me for life, actually, because I, you can you can keep cold water. Yeah, no. So because he it, had so. us in the River Y up to our necks, basically breaking ice off the River Y to get us in there in October. Because winters back then were... Fr- it seemed winters. to be worse, yeah. Seems now it's just grey you know, all the time, isn't it? Yeah. So we're up to our necks in water... Paul is freaking out, Mailer. He's just lost his shit totally, shaking and crying. And well, all of us were. And then he'd get us out of there and then he'd take us for a 10 mile run. And then he would set us these tasks where there was like this, this camp that we, you know, knocked up. And I mean, we had to make shelters, sleep in them, everything. It was full on. God, be miserable. Um, yeah, it was hell. Um, I remember just going off into a corner quite often in the day and just crying. Having a little sob. And just really like, I miss my mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I'm like, oh, I please, don't doubt please, that. Come and get me. In fairness, I miss Reed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a sound old bird. So now, earlier on, you said, like, you, you, your mum bought you a knife and stuff as well. I'm thinking, why on earth would you need a knife? But obviously, now it makes complete sense. And now I think we can extend this, the nickname because mm. clearly yeah. you had a blade. So I'd he's Boris the, the Blade. Boris the Blade, there you there go. You go. That, could be, that could be an <laughs> extension <laughs> of, the, of the nickname. That's mad. Like yeah, you actually, like, actually uh, I would have thought the train inside of it, but the actual, to do the whole... I mean, even out there in a tent and that would be hard work, wouldn't it? Yeah. It was It was gruesome. And I mean, like, I, you know... I think it should either give a bonding experience or you'd pop a fallout, wouldn't you? Yeah, no, we, we, we did a lot of falling out, but I suppose it's done something because I, I remember it. Like yeah, I exactly. It. How long... Had you been with Team Green at that point? I was, was off. Was, was you? Yeah. What was that like? About a year into riding for them? Well, I was off and on with Team Green all yeah, my you were. career, I, I really. But like, so, but that's when you were, okay back on the firm. Yeah. Um, well, well I, do you know? I can't. I, I, can't, I, can't, really I can't like. Rec- a lot of riders can recall every single year and every single. Uh, I, yeah, I know certain kinda, things. That, they just kind of blend into one. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I rode. Do. I rode kind of like because I. I because Alec was really good to me, um, as tough as he was, he was really, really good to me. And I won the what they class as the World Youth Finals on a big wheel back then, mm. uh, and it was at Ellsworth. Remember, we used to do yeah. the Elf National. Yeah, yeah. So champion champions. Is that the same race? No, no. no the Elf, the Elf National. National. Oh. They, it was a big did, deal. It was a big they deal. did the Elf International. So I won that, and Frederick Bollet was second, and Alec. Um, sent me to uh, California. So, and then I went and did the Golden State Series uh, over the winter. And we all moved there as a family for six weeks. And I was leading it when I left. And Kawasaki actually offered me a factory ride, but dad had his business at home and I could never stay. But yeah, I was racing against Kevin Windham and Ezra Lusk and all those guys. And I, I came away from there leading that. The Elf so, National is still, you can still see some clips of that. There's still bits yeah. of footage knocking around. Legendary on, race. Is YouTube is brilliant. Amazing. More and more is popping. But it was amazing for us yeah, as riders because it was so much was different to what, well, even even the simple things like um, like the, just the, getting like a goodie bag yeah, and signing on and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It was like, what? Like a proper oh, podium. Like you know, and you'd get, yeah. Trophies up here, bicycles. And the track was Let's be honest, yeah, like the most the American style track that we had. Ellsworth was meant though, wasn't it? Ellsworth, <laughs> until it rained. Yeah, I, but I think where we were as a country back then, I think we were so advanced. Mm. You know, Ellsworth back then, there was, no, there was nowhere else in Europe that even no. had a circuit like that. I learned no. to jump properly there. Yeah. And I mean, like, there was shit on that track that was oh, yeah. really challenging. It wouldn't look out of place now. No, it, it wouldn't That's look out of place. But, you know, it's, it was for me, you know, it was like, I learned so much from that place. Yeah. 
I mean, to educate the kids, it was <clears throat> ba- it was like a big supercross track, wasn't it? Massive. It was like basically an yeah, outdoor track. In the but 80s. It was like supercrossy. What it really was. It was and the it, only and it was lipped up. Oh, and it was, it was like, lipped up. Yeah. I saw a video only this week of yeah. of a, a little bit of a British Championship there, and DT hangs it up big time on some like well, I won't even call them rollers, like a proper rhythm section, yeah. and he, he cases it hard. Yeah, I I won the. I don't know if I won it overall, but I think I. I beat Stefan there at the last ever British Championship round we ever had at Everts. No way. Yeah, because it, like you said, it pissed it down. Yeah. So I think Eastie won the the last race. I think I won the second one, and Stefan was kind of like a little bit lost there. Yeah, it was. It was like ridiculously slick on it. And, and, but the ground was just pure clay, mm. pure yeah, clay, slippery, as slippery. And, but you know, it was the practice track that we could go to, on. And I was only thinking about this driving down here. I was thinking like. I learned so much from that place because practicing then wasn't like it is now where the kids were kind of like separate from the adults and all that. And I, I would go around on a hundred CC Kawasaki back then. And my goal was to chase Craig Prattley and, um, Oh, what was his name on the on the Honda? Uh, um, Rawson? No. no, no. Julian Rawson was amazing around there. Yeah, um, he was. Yeah. Matt Gordon. Matt Gordon. Matt. And they were cash draw Honda at the time, yeah, racing one two five yeah. World Grand Prix, and they were the best on one two fives. Yeah, yeah. And I would hang with them on a, on a hundred cc round there, and that's how I kind of like, you know, they make these steps now into adult professional racing and stuff. But at thirteen, all I wanted to do was. Be as fast as Hang Craig Cratley. Yeah. And that... It takes some doing, because he's still on the gas, and he's still going fast. But that kind of, like, brought me then into going into professional racing, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we went straight from there, as in MXY2, if you like. Then, you know, we go 125s. And then I was riding 125, and I would go around Ellsworth again, or... Because there weren't that much... That many practice tracks. No, really, the, no not many. then. Not, not the, the plethora we've got now as well. Yeah. No, it was gone the other way. We got yeah. like so many practice tracks, whereas then you kind of, you had and to go on private land or, yeah, one or two. That was yeah. it. And you, and you kind of learned your trade more at the weekend by, by racing. That was, that was your opportunity to ride unless you knew somebody that had a mm. private track. Yeah. But it was very limited on practice tracks. So anyway, but, so I think we've jumped the gun. Well, no, we, we, get, we get round to that, won't we, at the end? We're talking. I just about think about we need to. Talk about how you got into it. Oh. Because um, your dad get... wasn't a racer. No. So I was three. Three. And I remember it very clearly. Again, moments in your life, isn't it? Again. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I remember it was Christmas and uh, not far from here in Gloucester, I was driving down Barton Street, one of the roughest places you'll ever take a human being. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. That's right. See, my conception of Gloucester is obviously oh, no. not... I, I, oh, I no, there's Gloucester. some salty areas in Gloucester. Oh, yeah. Every city has got some salty areas. It, I suppose but... that's true, but I've always yeah. had it down as yeah, a very we're not far nice... From the, we're not far from the Bronx here. Oh, no, no, I not. thought it was but... a very ambient, nice area. I got that wrong then. Yeah. There was... Uh... Oh, there's a lot of niceness there. There's a yeah, lot, no, it's a lot of money. I mean, you know, the cathedral and all that around there, that's where they did all Harry Potter and everything, wasn't it? So, <laughs> But um, for some reason, I was going... I remember it, Christmas, Christmas lights, and as a kid, lights are just everything. When you... Yeah you know, around Christmas time and um, going down Barton Street and looked into Fantics, you know, Fantics? Yeah. Motorcycles? Yeah, yeah. And there was a Honda 50 monkey, monkey bike. Oh. And I just looked at it and I remember it as clear as day. I was just like, I want one. Oh, I want one of them. I want one of them. Um, So it went from begging, I must have been a right pest or whatever, um, pretty similar to how I am now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, just begged and begged and begged. Um, and I didn't get that bike, but I went and watched a few races. And I can still remember turning up at a Cotswold race or Seven Valley race and smelling Cash Oh, yeah, and that'll get you. Anybody who knows what's Cash Oh, yeah, that'll get you. It's, it's like the modern day. Should be on the NHS as a prescription. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't it be? Uh, 100%. It, make, it makes me nervous. That's the, any two stroke hole makes yeah. me nervous. So it'd be like race cars now, yeah. I guess. Yeah. 114 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Kids are just. But really, it's C12. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kids are just up, up, up the ante. Yeah. <laughs> what you need to up the park? Oh, I've been uh, sniffing Castro Yeah. All mm. yeah, right. That's all right. You off but that you put lab. it along with the sign, lines of like tarmac. I love the smell of yeah. fresh tarmac. Yeah. Tarmac yeah. and petrol. Cut yeah. grass is my yeah. favorite. So, um, 
I remember going and watching a couple of races and then um, there was a guy called David Wright and Eddie Wright. And my mum used to work with them doing, a, it was a parcel delivery thing back then in the day called Pippa D. And they rode and they, I think they had a, Hon, uh, a Suzuki, I think it would have been 79, 50. And it was one with the alley tank. Okay. 79, I think. Yeah. 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 Something yeah. around then. Yeah, on. Hey, this is your business. You should know this, for oh, God's sake. Yeah, I don't know. We're all in the of vintage. It. Like, I don't know, you know all of it, kid. You know what I mean? Epicenter. No, but... but anyway, it's a bike that I'd still want to get, actually. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't have any. Uh, there's two bikes in my life that I want. I want my very first bike, and I'd like to get my Fat GH chassis Honda back. I'm sure you would. Yeah, with the Nissan front brake and the adjustable clutch. Do you want to see it? Yeah. I've got it Have you got the fact in this Sam front brake? Yeah. Because anybody that who rides torturing. a HRC bike, if you're lucky enough to ride a HRC bike, I remember... That, that uh, direct push front brake was special, wasn't it? Well, the two adjusting one, levers. Our one back then was ABS as well. It had yeah. an ABS system in it. But anyway, so going to that, um, I went and I did my first ever race uh, at Cotswolds. And, um, what year was this? I, I suppose it'd been eighty or something like that. Yeah, nineteen eighty. Mm. Something. So, yeah, it would have been eighty, eighty-one. I guess something like that. Six. I was six, so do the maths on that. Now, what year were you born? Well, Seventy-five. Oh, okay. Yeah, so eighty-one. Yeah, eighty-one. So yeah, yeah, eighty, eighty-one, something like that. Um, and hated it. I said I never want to do it again. And my old man was like, well, you oh, know, my old man. I imagine Pete was happy about that <laughs> after spending the money. Why effing buying all this effing oh, stuff? Oh, imagine. So um, so he took me back and took me back and took me back. And then, yeah, just it kind of went on from there, really. Um, my dad was mega with me, to be honest, with racing. Um, he was keen when he blessed him. Yeah, yeah, he was hard. He was very, very hard on me. But I think, you know, it was what it was. And dad really never sat still when it came to my racing. Did he not? He, so he didn't have any. He didn't have any understanding or any interest in the sport prior to you walking past he rode, that shop. He rode road bikes. Oh, so he had an interest in bikes. So that's yeah, probably he rode a road key bikes. thing that drove yeah. it forward as well. Then, yeah, definitely. Um, and Dad was really good at rugby. He played like he played for Wales at rugby and stuff like that. Um, but he broke his arm twice in the same place, so he couldn't kind of like extend his arm. So he kind of like he was a very sporty, active man. Um, and obviously he, I don't know whether or not he was living his career through my career, yeah, if you like, because it was cut short. Yeah, quite. That happens, so, off, that yeah. happens often. Yeah, and if definitely. he's a competitive, yeah. if he's from a competitive sporting yeah. background. Yeah, hundred percent. So, and very competitive, very, very driven and, and tough on me. Very tough, you know? And I he think, was quite a daunting geezer. Yeah, he I mean, was. I worked yeah, for him briefly savage, yeah. in Gloucester on the body shop stuff. Yeah. And when I started work, all the blokes and they were terrified of him. Oh, I'm like, it's just Pete. What do you want about? Like, yeah, no. Just, yeah. And I, you know, it'd like it'd like yell at us. So I start laughing. Yeah, because I'd be like, I remember one day some bloke was messing around under a car. That's what Dad did: repaired vehicles and stuff like that. He's really good at it. Really good, yeah. Very, very good. Best in like this area. He was so. mega for it, yeah. And some bloke was I don't know what he was doing, but he was under the car, and my old man just let the jack down on him. <laughs> he caught he caught me asleep under a car. Yeah, it might have been you. It then. was me. He caught, he caught he caught me asleep under a car. I used to sit. I used to lay on my back and just like smash stuff on occasion. Yeah. And then it went quiet for a bit. I think I passed out. Yeah. yeah. No, he, my he oh my! How really how tough. the world has changed. <laughs> <laughs> you there, boy? Get to work. I'll tell you what. I'll just lower that. Yeah. Can I imagine if you did that now. Oh my god! I but I mean, like I remember Brutal. there was cool. like there was like a bit of unrest in the body shop at one time, and they were talking about this, and they wanted it. And I remember your man gathered everybody in the, in the workshop, everybody there. Yeah. And he's like, listen, we're not friends. No. You're not my mate. I'm mm. not your mate. That's the way it is. Yeah. He said, I pay your mortgage. You pay yeah. mine. Yeah. If you don't like it, the door's open. Yeah. And, and there was, was no more much, to it. Yeah. You're like, oh, and I started giggling. He didn't like that. Yeah. But that's how he lived. That's how he kind of like raised us. Yeah. Just exactly as it I is. I didn't take any shit. He was no. mega. But you know no. where you stood with him in fairness? Yeah. And exactly that, you know, um, we weren't, best friends if i'm honest <laughs> we we struggled a lot but you know growing up and racing 
obviously he was he had my you know interests at heart from the get go. So we you know we we did all club racing stuff around this area. Um, I kind of like got to the point where that wasn't enough. So he then was like, right, okay, let's let's just travel the country finding the best riders. And that's all we ever did, week in, week out. Just go anywhere where the best boys were. So the national stuff probably started for you, what, around three years? Like, well, not 84? 80, when I, when my kind of like riding really 85? kicked, 85. That's when I first remember. Yeah. End of 84, 84 is when I first. 85, it really took, took you know, took yeah. us. And who was your generation? There was you, there was Kelly Swanson. Lee Morrison was Lee amazing Morrison. back then. Stephen Obviously, Holmes, me. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nathan. Nathan Shelton. Nathan was a little, I think he's, just, he's fractionally mm. a little bit younger was than us. So okay. he was no, on, no, Nathan. Was he, I'm yeah. the youngest out of all oh, of right, our group. Yeah. Aren't, so I'm 49. So, Kyle, so I'm one of the oldest in our year. So yeah. I was always moving up when, say, you and Kelly. Yeah, were, but I was always down. moved up early. Yeah. Exactly. My old man just put me up. He's like, well, there's no point racing with those guys yeah. when your mm. riders are moving up. Yeah, yeah. So let's just keep going. You see Nathan around, but never That's seen good, Kelly anymore, though. That's a good trait. Kelly up there, is he all right? Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't seen Kelly in a long time. I no, Kelly for a lot of ages. He was a nice. Good to get him in, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, he's he's had a he's had a bit of a tough time with health. I think he's had cancer scares. And oh, was he? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I bumped into Neil Shepherd at the uh, donations actually, and I was having a chat with him, and he was explaining a few bits and bobs, and we were just you know just chatting because he just, just like he and, quit, and that was it. You never see him again. Same with Cal. Same with Cal. Yeah. Just done. Done. Drive figures. Um, married Mandy, um, Bob Jones's daughter. Okay. And um, his son, I don't know if he still is, but is an amazing darts player. Because <laughs> Cal was always in the bloody purple. <laughs> <laughs> Game on. Yeah. He really? was, yeah. And um, I don't know how or what level he's got to, but the last I heard, yeah, that Cal's lab was really, really good. Oh. So, right. Need to, need to. Get him in. Get him in. Kelly, if you're watching story. this, we need you in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Legends. We need to get you uh, in. He was so fast. Yeah, he was. So he fast. was fast. He was. There was a, we had, really? we, I mean, we, this is, listen, I'm, I'm exactly. You our say era. it because it sounds like I'm being incredibly biased. No, no. But we did have a good crop across there. Our era of racing, you know, whether it, depth it, of talent, though. whether it was there by was luck nationals. or whether yeah. it was by just graft, mm. I'd like to think the both. And talent, obviously, we you know, the talent was was bottomless. But once you get once you get a group of you, you kind of drag each other on though. Well, yeah, because one person's going fast mm. for a brief yeah. period of time, yeah. and everybody's trying to keep up with them. And then everybody, yeah. well, I, one person's good on a certain track, yeah, be it soft or hard, whatever, yeah. And you drag each other on, like you say, you were chasing around, yeah, trying to keep up with Matt and yeah, Craig, Craig Bradley you know? and whoever. But I think you know, I think you, it was really like that in the mid mid eighties for us. You, mm. you, we'd go to a national. Because obviously you didn't have a you didn't have a British championship per se back then. You had an ACU the championship. You had the finals, but you, you know it all led to the finals. Mm. We had a handful back then of clubs used to run like two day meetings that yeah. were nas classed as nationals. Yeah, so and you'd have really like the Caution good. National, South Somerset, Seven Valley, and they were all yeah. and and you know <clears throat> our era. You know, I remember going there, and at any one point. Yeah. I don't think anybody really ever started those events as like firm favourites. There was always well, you we know, weren't, a half we weren't, a dozen, yeah. certainly in the 80 class, 100 class, yeah. that could win it on the weekend. Because because it wasn't, like you say, it wasn't like a, a British championship where each round kind of like went on and on and on. So, yeah. you know, we'd meet up at these races. But also, mm. as far as the bikes go, because that's more my old never a good rider, the development of the bikes at that time mm. was incredible. Yeah. And like you wouldn't see them until... Dirt bike show. Yeah. yeah. You go to Bristol Dirt Bike Show, first yeah. time you've seen a bike. I know. But it'd be like water cooled and disc brakes. I mean, yeah. big changes. Yeah. Big changes. Not, even you know, like it, now, oh, things are the same. Even like, when it was like a change of colour, like when Yamaha turned to a red seat. It was just cool. And yeah. it's like, and a safety seat. Imagine a safety seat saying that to a kid. Now, what do you mean a safety yeah. seat? Well, we asked, yeah, exactly. we used to get our nagers caught between the yeah. seat and the. I remember disc brakes. I'm like, that never worked. <laughs> and like, and the tank. You did, yeah. though, didn't no, you? I did, yeah. yeah. I remember having the, you know, thinking, God, that's smart in a little bit. I just, <laughs> but yeah. the amount of riders we had back then was amazing. Yeah, I think. You know, I mean, to get to the ACU finals. Was a deal, wasn't it? Was a massive deal. Names all over the back of the T&M. Mm. You know, you, you grafted. 
Yeah. But, you know, that yeah. was a reflection of the amount of people riding. Mm. The industry was buoyant. Yeah. Whether the pricing compared with the wages, I don't really know. Mm. But, you know, it seemed to be much more affordable. Or there was more money about. Well, I don't we really tre- know. We were, I think you know, for, for me, we were treated like mini professionals. Oh, yeah, it was stars. You know, yeah. like from the age of 10, I think, Dad never bought a bike. No, you were groomed. We were massively, yeah. you That'd know, be like the ACU next finals, yeah. you know, you'd have Roger Harvey there, you'd have Alec Wright there, you'd have all of them, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the manufacturers. And from there, you literally had to go, right, okay, who am I going to sign for here? Yeah, yeah, Honda, yeah. you know, McMill- Bob McMillan. Yeah, yeah, totally. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, and then we went on and then it was the next step, right, okay, you're going straight into the British Championship. And then I'd go, well, the, the level that we were at, I remember doing my first ever British Championship and finishing second. Yeah, yeah. On a 125, which is yeah. MX2. Mm. I do remember I took you to your first Grand Prix. Do you remember that? Oh, don't. Portugal on the Do you know what? I was talking about this the <laughs> other day. Right? I so had a phone call. Let me tell my story. I had a phone call from Steve <laughs> Gutteridge, who at the time was looking after the schoolboy stuff. He said, look, are you available to take Justin to a Grand Prix? <sighs> he just needs a bit of guidance through. And I'm like, yeah, we've got a good stock bike. I'm like, Oof. I had the shop at the time. And like, we were looking after Justin a little bit. And we ended up going to Portugal, me, Pete, and you. And we went down there and it was like, fuck, we were outgunned from the minute we Listen got there. Listen to this, though. This is amazing, right? So I remember you got, you got all the factor teams, obviously. But I was Kawasaki at that point. You were Kawasaki? That, that was, I, was ra- I was racing for Alec. But I... <clears throat> like, I tra- you must have been, you must have been last year in your schoolboys. They wanted to give you a bit of experience. Yeah, I didn't want to go straight into 250 British Championship. So they said, right, go and do the 125 Grand Prix. So what? I was, what, 15? Yeah, 15. 15. I think. So we'd gone down there. First ever Grand Prix. So I'm out, flat out, flat out, and I'm, it was, uh, I just pissed myself laughing when I thought this the other day. I was driving down here thinking of it. <laughs> so we're in qualifying. This is 91? I don't know, something like that. I think we're so. We're in qualifying, and it's two groups, and I am like two off of reserve or something, and I am like going around there. It was piss wet through, wasn't it? Yeah. And I'm flat out trying to qualify, trying to qualify. Anyway, check a flag comes out. I'm so gutted. I'm thinking I've not qualified, but I, I put a real good fast lap in right at the death. Yeah. So I'm back at the van now and I'm, I'm absolutely dev. <laughs> <laughs> I've opened up the fridge and I just, I, I don't know. Word of a lie, you had a, <clears throat> you had a chicken wing in one hand and a bars bar in the other, which yeah. is the most disgusting combination I know, you right? can think of. So I'm there, I've got this chicken wing and a Mars bar and a can of Coke on the and side going. And it into it. And I'm like, I'm over this shit yeah. like this. And he says, we, what do you mean? He Good. said, we've got to go back out. I'm like, what? He says, you've qualified. <laughs> I remember you coming in about 10 minutes to go. How do I look? I said, you look like you're not going to fucking qualify. That's how you look. <laughs> and he was like, what do you mean? I said, mate, you need to really put it out there. Yeah. You can't be looking good. And credit where credit's due, you did two laps. And I swear to God, you came past me. The only part of you touching that bike was your throttle hand. Yeah. Look, hanging off it like washing. In fairness, you did. Mm. And since that, you've always been mega at qualification. Yeah. You've just... always been able to put a lap in. And that was your first experience yeah. of it because through school yeah. boys, you didn't yeah. have to put a lap in. Yeah. You no, was just going to go out and yeah. practice. But yeah. then, and you did, you got in, and then, what about this? Well, we left the fucking awning behind, didn't we? I know. <laughs> it was muddy. So we and drove we... to Italy, bro. <laughs> so you mean left the awning behind? Mate, we mate, mate you've never seen so much shit to the in man. all your life, right? My old man bought this amazing motor. Oh, lovely thing. Massive yeah. American motor. The, the back bed was made into well, a workshop. Yeah. It? And so like... <laughs> we've, we've gone down. This is in a track called Arganil. I remember it the other day. Yeah. And we've gone down to... F- like it's of it's the Algarve, so we found this petrol station, and we've got everything out. And we've and got it. everything out. We're washing it all off. Anyway, we've loaded it all up. We're driving, and I'm not sure if we got to France or something like. We that. We were a right? long way, kid. And we were like eight or you ten said hours. It, or I said it. Somebody said, "Fuck the awning," like that. And I remember the minute you said that, it was hanging on the fence, and we drove off and left it. Yeah. So my old man, instead of instead and I'm like, I'm like, I ain't telling him, and you're yeah. like, you've got to tell him because he'll yell at me, and I'm like, I ain't getting yelled at by Pete. I don't, so my old man, right? We turn round. Turn round. We we must have spent about an hour to, you know. It's, it's probably so, more expensive in fuel to go back and get it than buying a new oh. one. So we, I don't know, this awning was freaking <laughs> big. That was big, yeah. So it was 32 foot, that motor home. She was an absolute beast. massive thing. Anyway, he's turned round and he's driven back. It must have been half a day to get it back It was there. quiet though, wasn't it, that drive back? <laughs> I bet. 
<laughs> we rocked up at this petrol station. I remember it's a shell still station. It's still there. Still there. The We've just got it off in a big huff, <laughs> folded it up, put it in the back of the van, and turned Come around. On, and let's go to Italy. Italy. Yeah, but that's how it go- rolls down there. I mean, who would have probably, people probably wouldn't even worked out what it was, would it? No. Stay there? I'm just like, oh, that God. Was I remember thinking, I'm not telling him. 13 years of it. But like Wob says, it, that's quite interesting that you, because you, you are, you do have a knack of qualifying, you know, like you, you, uh, mm. there is an art to it. Some people oh, can massive. do it, some can't. Yeah. I don't, uh, I think that's fair to say, you know, some people have a limit of how, for me, for example, I, I have a limit. I yeah. can't go beyond that thing where I start to feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not saying you can, but it always appeared like I, you could. Yeah. No, you have to just leave your brain in the toolbox, yeah, don't thing, you? You have yeah, to just, but the thing go, is, yeah. but the thing is for me, when, when riders say, oh, I'm a better racer than I am a qualifier, well, sorry, but qualifying it's important. is part of your racing. Yeah. So you've got to learn to be that yeah, way. Yeah. Hmm. And for two minutes of your life or a minute and a half of your it's life, you've be, got to be able to do it. Yeah. So when my riders say, yeah, but I'll be way better in the race, I said, yeah, but we're 18th on the grid. Yeah, exactly. That's, we've got no chance now. Now buried yourself. So yeah. you know, we've now got to learn how to qualify. Yeah. So it's a different technique. Yeah. I, th- I believe. And I mean, I've never done it. So but it... comfortable with qualifying. I loved it. Yeah. Really loved it. But if Did anybody thinks get... it's easy, put a stopwatch on yourself and see how many mistakes yeah. you make. Yeah. Because totally, it, the, totally. the minute somebody presses that but button, but this is you my job, isn't it? It's teaching people how to go fast because people try and go fast in the wrong bloody places. Yeah. True. Like I said, we'll get into that. We'll did talk ever, about that in the next. Did you episode. ever? Did you ever scare yourself on qualifying laps? Loads. Well, you scared me watching you. Loads, <laughs> loads. I'm sure he did. In, <laughs> I want to know what's going on in his. Yeah, head. do oh, you know? Thinking, they did a thing. It mega. It, they did a thing for us at the Grand Prix one year. I don't know if you ever remember it, but in '97 or '98, Eurosport for the first time, and it never took off, did a Saturday like they do in Formula One qualification. Yeah, like a sprint race. No, 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 qualifying. They, so they, they did a live program and then they filmed every rider in the top 10. Oh, okay. And they put it out on, on Eurosport. I think right? remember yeah. that. You were doing yeah. 250 GPs. Yeah, 250 GPs. Why so, don't I remember that? So because we, I wasn't in the top 10. <laughs> so we were there. The we were there. We were there. Getting at, a Mars bar and a fucking chicken yeah. into it. <laughs> <laughs> we were there at um, Aguida because that's where our GP was even back then. And they, they took the top 10... And they said, right, we're going to have you up at the FIM tent and you're all going to watch back your, your laps. And I, I think I went second and we all watched each other's laps. Oh, that's why I don't remember. So, you, yeah, you didn't go back out and do like a super pop. No, no, no. Oh, no. you just did a TV show. It was a that's TV why. show okay. yeah, and yeah, all the top right. 10 were recorded. Right. okay. So, and then they, like it, was GoPro a, it was like, recorded. A, no, no, full on with the camera. Oh, with not like, normal and, and they did the a track program. camera. Okay. Yeah, they made a program around it. They made okay. a program around it. Analyze your lap and yeah. all that kind okay. of stuff. So we all went up to the tent afterwards and they had our, our laps out there and mate, freaking how, like so, talk about scare yourself, but you're yeah. so used to going at that speed. Yeah. You have to not I worry mean, about I, it for say, say a couple of minutes of your life. You're so is. used to going at that speed. You make so many, like, you don't make mistakes, but you have so many moments well, that, you have to push don't, the envelope, yeah, don't you? that don't define the lap, but could literally write you and off. That's an art in itself. Like, when you when you think you've made a mistake that's yeah. costly, yeah. you just got to keep pushing. Keep pushing. Actually, you might have already been a second up at that yeah, point exactly. when you've done that. Yeah. Anyway. It's not like F1 where no. you are knackered the yeah. lap. You yeah. see a lot you, of people. You know what yeah. I mean? But yeah. there, there's a mistake and there's a mistake. There's a mistake yeah. there's an obvious where one. you lose time and there's a mistake where you've had a moment. It's yeah. just ugly. Your yeah. foot's slid yeah, off. Your fl- the car whatever. Michael effect. You've ridden yeah, across the top exactly, of the hay bank. Exactly it's still, that. It's still, still going still forward, it, yeah. It's still quicker than yeah. skimming yeah. the whoops. Well, that's, it's you know, and thing. we all watched each other's laps back and I was sat there with Stefan and all of those guys and we were just like, oh my God. God. Yeah, Tortelli, Tortelli was always scary to watch. Unbelievable. I, well, listen, Rhino broke his wrist there that day on the qualifying. He qualifier. did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. And I was right behind tried, him. He tried I to was double right something him. that we all thought was undoable. Yeah. And Going up that ridge yeah. along that tree line. Yeah. And I was the rider directly behind him. And he came past me and I heard him hook a gear. And I'm thinking, he's never doing it. Why is yeah. he? I, literally, at an instant, <laughs> I thought, he's hooking a gear when we're Why? all going down one. And I looked around <laughs> and he came past me, fully tapped. And I'm thinking, Surely he's not. He yeah. is, and he tried and jumping in this sort of hole yeah. on a corner. Yeah, yeah. Didn't and man, work. did he? Did he land? Yeah, hard. No, credit where credit. I've sh- he tried obviously, it. I've shared tracks with these guys doing qualifying, and yeah, I always, you know, because we're, we're out there doing, you know, like coast laps, linking the laps together sometimes, and yeah, 
he's, he's come past me hot a few times, yeah. more than a few times. Um, but I enjoyed quite I particularly I remember so one. Comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good at it. In Televera one time, man, you, no. you came over that spine jump thing, came down, and I was just because the corner, the finish yeah. line was around the next corner. Yeah. So I was just getting set for a quick lap. Man, you come down there on a hustle, you hit this braking bump, and like I was thinking, and you just went straight on. And remember that there was like it a, was a bank. It was a bank. I you remember. You just used the bank to stop. Yeah. Like, like you know when a NASCAR goes into the wall and they, yeah. they scrape all the way all around, the way around yeah. until they yeah. peel off it. Ian he was so on the last Ian engine. was he so back, he pissed at me for that. Yeah, <laughs> Ian Brown was so pissed off at me. At that. What did you wreck? Everything. They had to carry a factory HRC yeah. Honda back on yeah. two stakes. Oh, that's not good. Everything was twisted. But, the, but uh, typically, nothing left of the bike. No. <laughs> one corner to go. As yeah, well. one corner. And he said, if I'd have finished the lap, I'd have I'd have pulled by about two seconds. Mm. <laughs> one corner. So what to was go. Your, what's your highlight of your career then? Just come on. Oh, I don't know. Schoolboys or adults? Everything. Where you actually put it together. What day? Some days it's just easy, isn't it? Some days yeah, it's just... Yeah, I just... I don't know. I just had so many great ones. Fox Hills. You always good on Fox Hills. Yeah. I've had some amazing results around Fox Hills. Won British Championships there. That's when we landed on that TV camera. Well, yeah, exactly. That was going well. <laughs> you were fast was that the TM? Time. That was TM. 2000? Do you know, talk about that qualifying. 2000? Yeah, yeah. 99. 99. So 99. So that, bit of a mother, that weekend... weekend really wet that's how confident i was in qualifying mm. so we had 40 minutes of qualifying and i left it till the last minute to cross the line but i was last and i was so confident in qualifying that i thought right okay i'll just leave it till the very last lap and i pulled that <laughs> in 99 no i was second behind villain i think mm. but yeah i was that comfortable with qualifying if it if it had gone wrong i, I wouldn't have qualified that much, <laughs> but it didn't and i was happy with that so highlights, I mean, geez, I've I've had so many. I've ridden for the best teams in the world. I've raced the best tracks, best riders, in my opinion. Yeah, well, it was a good time. It, I've had you some know, the amazing results, a... you know, top tens in the world overall, you know, podiums, bits and bobs. It's been ace. Can't really not what I've done. People say, oh, would you go back and change anything? My personality is what it is. We had a lot of fun at the time. Though, kids, I've had a lot of fun oh, in my, my life. Uh, and people say, oh, well, you know, they all say to me now, oh, would you, you know, would you, because everyone says how fit I am now, would you train harder seeing that I'm so fit now? And my words were, I, I was extremely fit then, but I just didn't know about training correctly back then as I do now. And when I'd have a bad weekend and I'd get knackered in a race, I'd train harder the next week where really I was just spiraling myself. So. But, that, but that's classic. That's the that's the balance of life, isn't it? Yeah. So I know. Way the thing is, you came that. along when they when they actually people were getting serious about it. Oh, I mean, until serious. until you came along, you had a couple of three guys. I think were, a couple of three guys were good yeah. at it. Like Thorpe used to do proper training. But you know, Thorpe Thorpe trained me back in the nineties. You know, when I rode for him. But you know, it's it it's scientific now. Yeah, and I believe the Everts era of that time were scientific, and the rest of us weren't. Yeah, I think that that's Tortelli the thing. was I think very I think scientific. I think it's bled down now, where everybody everybody doing, knows. Everybody knows know, now. Everybody it was always the top two or three guys who had the hang of it. Yeah, and then now it seems to be everybody. Because yeah. our racing, I, I don't give a damn what you say. Our racing, as as much as the tracks were probably smoother, but to go and do forty minutes around Japan or Venezuela or something like that on a two fifty two stroke on, in forty seven degrees. Hmm. I'm sorry, but you know, Brownie would, you know, be as solid as anybody to say that was brutal. that was brutal. But, I mean, like that was a depth of talent as well. I'm not saying oh, there isn't now because that's a. But you've got like, the names. You could rate like ten or fifteen names. God, yeah. Uh, who would be capable of winning? Oh yeah, all day. You long. know, Demario and Bolle, and it's just oh, yeah. oh my god, the yeah. depth was unbelievable. Yeah, it was, you know, but, but you wouldn't have put a ten on who was going to win. Were unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Our, well, that's exactly. Our our championship was pretty. Pretty we stacked. Had the best domestic oh, championship in Europe. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely, no question about that. I agree with that. And in that time, that's when the five hundreds were obviously up until that point. The eighties was mm. the five hundred era. Yeah, that was diminishing, and they all sort of came over yeah, to early fifty early class 90s, around the time that yeah. we were racing the two fifty GPs. It was. It, I remember it, being it in the French Grand stacked. Prix, French Grand Prix, and I was second or third, I think, in the race. And in the top 10 of that French GP around Brew, remember Brew? Oh, yeah, my I God, that was a big So I remember being in the top 10 in that race, 
Five of them were English. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. Well, we talked about Me, like, the eighties. Yeah. Was that the ninety seven? Eastie had a good ride there, didn't he? Eastie. Yeah. You know, Cooper was Coops. running at the front. Yeah, just so for like honestly, ten years there, Robbie, like the Robbie, British, yeah. you know, like they were grading lists. You struggled to get on the grading list. You had to be top seven in the country you to did. go on a grading list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and for thirteen years of racing GPs, you had to be in the top seven in yeah. the British Championship, which I raced. It's not easy done, is it? It's not. Easy. It's not. You know. You know, and it's like you were against British them. British Championship was savage as well. It was, and then you get like the, the likes okay. of Coyle and West Jarman and the, yeah. all them on Irish licenses because they couldn't get in. Yeah. But like British Championship, then like the. The boys don't even know they're born now. <laughs> We'd have two twenty fives, and then they just throw in a super final at, at the end. Thirty five minutes yeah. plus two. Yeah, yeah. So our days were as as hard Big as day. a Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah, and also the evolution of the tracks. You know, yeah. like going down for example, like a track like Waggerton Farm. Yeah. If we went down there now mm. for a British <laughs> youth, yeah. I wonder what they'd make of that. Well, they just some. Of, it, they won't know what to do. What's that? What? what All those off cameras. Why have with, we got a corner going along? <laughs> with, with, yeah, and why? Where? Why is it? Why are all those rocks in that rut? Surely yeah. they're going to get rid of them. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, Make a new rut. Mate. Make a new rut. Before. Don't keep going in the same rut with yeah. all those rocks in it. They just mowed it from the year before. Yeah. Crack on, kids. Classic. Yeah. But it was. It was. I know. I sound old. I like Ralph Venables. Back That's in my the day. Beauty of this podcast. Yeah. We all sound old because we are. We, that's that's we are why we're doing it. We're getting old. But maybe got nowadays these tell, are the golden Justin. days for these kids. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe in maybe. twenty years they're going to yeah. be given all sure joy. It's sure. a total different world of racing now. If I'm honest, um, I'm not so comfortable with a lot of it, but it's it's a different world, and I don't. I don't Is it as much fun as it was? Oh, no one here. No, no I hear that near. in the states as well. I mean, like when I was doing the nationals. Over there, 03, 04, 05. Now, apparently, everybody's like, oh, it's no fun since you've gone. No. Not because I was there, but, but we can you know, it's, it all on, it's all on one day. It's all we're going to. We're we going to do another episode we'll after this, talking about where we're at now. Oh, that's going to be one. We could sit here for hours and just discuss then. Who was your... You that's what I'm saying. An hour blows by, kid. Yeah, let, let's, yeah, we'll save that for the next episode, which is coming up. Mm. Okay, rivalries. Yeah. Who... Was there any standout ones, ones where, like, you just had to beat them, or, did, or was it... All for one and all that kind of stuff. Or is there anybody that got under your skin? Growing up as a, a really young, no, we've always, Lee, Lee we've always got on a right, haven't we? Lee, Lee Morrison was an amazing. He guy was a good rider. So he fast, he was unbelievable. He was like, yeah, he was like, he again, looked old. good on the bike. Yeah, as well, he, 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 he was like, always fluid. He, he on just the bike, looked he? like Ron Lachine as a yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. So people don't know Ron Lachine is what they <laughs> <you> do <laughs> the dogger um but he was an amazing guy to race um and we had some epic epic battles even around like Ellsworth and stuff like that like phenomenal and then he got her at Nantwich and broke his neck and now everybody knows his well I don't yeah. know if anybody knows his story but he's now one of the greatest film film guys in the world film guys in yeah. the world does all well, we got Bond we got Paul or... Everson coming on and he's, yeah. that's who Paul does. A lot who works with, yeah, I works guess. With, yeah. Works for he, us. He's like the stunt director, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah he's unbelievable, Lee. So Lee, I loved racing when I was a kid. Um, I think you should get as up. as professional. On the list, mate. He's on the list. Yeah. He's on our he's on our, on our growing list. list. As a professional racer in England, if we're talking British Championships, you know, Coops, Paul Cooper was amazing. Gordon Crockard, Robbie Heron. Um, yeah, Mark Eastwood. There was it, the depth was so good. Yeah. Again, on so any, weekend. any weekend, it was who was having a good chance. You know, who was having a good weekend? Yeah, and was up the front. You wouldn't like you the know, same. you you couldn't really. There wasn't anybody. But in fairness, Robbie was always at the front, but he didn't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, no, but but what we're getting, at, I think, is the margins. Like that, yeah. it wasn't these big, huge amount of seconds gaps between no. between the top ten. You know, we're, we're talking on one day, like just being a second a lap quicker. It didn't yeah. sound, you know, can make all the oh yeah all the difference. Of course, it's going to. But what I mean is now. Now you've got some riders on some weekend that are clearly head and shell. You know, yeah. after qualifying, you're like, oh, yeah. no, it's a foregone conclusion. You yeah. had none like of watching going Prado on. this year, some races when I was in oh, Spain, yeah. that was just like mm. embarrassing for the rest of the MX1 world. I know, he was on it. You know, like in the heat race, going like three seconds a lap, five seconds a lap quicker mm. every lap. And you're like, mm. how can this happen? He has some pretty be? special lines, doesn't he? Amazing. Amazing. Like I said, you've been on um, some fantastic teams, some yeah. of the best, and, you know, what about team wise? Was there any team that really you felt really just was your best years? 
be it the mechanics yeah. you work with, the team managers, you know. I mean, they're all great teams, but yes. sometimes things just align. Sometimes they good. gel, sometimes yeah. it's just I awkward all year. Yeah. For me personally, my my years at HRC was amazing. You know, the Ian was my mechanic, Elliot Banks, Brown's dad. Um, my bike was like legally cheating, if you like. A HRC Honda, if you had that, then that was just unbelievable. But that comes with this pressure. Oh, yeah, massively. And it comes with- I was having, I, I remember, you know, 98, I think it was, I I was selected for motocross donations at Box Hills, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 But I couldn't stop my shoulder coming out of joint. And I was, I was leading the British Championship as well. I couldn't even do the last round because it fell out. I was like 10, 15 points in the lead of that championship. And... Those years were something, yeah, just amazing. Being part of it with that Steph was RWJ, and, yeah, you know, with Stefan and Yoki, and it was just you learn. I learned from Harry Everts, from those guys, and from Stefan so much work ethic. That was the biggest thing, I think, just mm. seeing how a person like him works, yeah, and the effort and the the, the relentless. You know, there is a difference. Oh, like say people don't understand when they, when we talk about work, and I talk to my guys about work. You haven't; they can't even fathom no. the the extent that you know they would go to. Stefan wouldn't think twice about doing three fifty minute motos on a practice day, no, and then running home, doing that three days a week, then training, then doing everything. It was I think just his calf like, muscles were proof of that, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. I well, mean, it was the same in the but state. Insane. You know, RC but, fucked it up for everybody. Yeah, you know. but you know, I'm, I, you say RC. I, I, nobody of that era did not train. No, they were incredible human beings. Yeah, well, that's it, it. Really changed, you know, in the states from your McGrath and your Emig as it went into mm. the RC. It, like I say, it got technical. Yeah, like these guys are massive are cycle trainers. Yeah, they're older and whatever. Yeah, and these guys are. Night and day ahead of what Bringing was available at the motocross yeah. at the time, the technology that the cycle guys brought to it, yeah, was just off the scale. But you see that now. I'm, I, I always make a, you know, a reference to sport in general. So, you know, I was lucky enough at my school. I went to a private school, and uh, we used to get England come and train there, the rugby team. And back in the day of then, England rugby team, you would look at an English rugby team. And the scrum were all massive, massive bruiser guys. Yeah. And then you'd look down the 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 line of the the backs and the yeah. wingers. And by the time you got to the winger, you had a little Rory Underwood here yeah, that was this size. Yeah. Now, if you look at an England rugby team, they are literally if they do a lineup, they're all the same. They're all the same. So the winger is still six foot six, and that guy can run a hundred meters in nine seconds. Yeah. Something yeah, ten yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. But the forward is the same size as six foot six. Yeah. So how have they made all human beings to run like the wind and still hit like a be like a brick shit house? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I say, sports Mike, science. It's Mike science. Teague was there last week. Was he? Yeah. And and, and yeah. It's not he was a player. That. He was a boy. Wasn't he, yeah. Back well, in the day. my English teacher was his coach. Oh, never. So my English teacher when I was at school was Keith Richardson, and he was Gloucester's coach. Oh, okay. Cool. So I, yeah, it's he's a good egg, Mike. Yeah. Very very good man, and it you know he he was a brick in. Gloucester, isn't he? Yeah, he's got one's a building thing. Building, yeah. 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 But he still so, loves his dirt bikes. He comes over yeah. and gets bits all the time. But I mean, you know, it's just science. They create human beings. Here. True. Yeah. And very, 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 very the world's powerful. changed <laughs> so much regards of accessibility to that science because yeah. everybody can now research it, internet, all those yeah. wonderful things that we now rely on. Well, I trained Ask as a Google. you know, I well, I trained yeah. as a PT as well, because I think that's important to be able to still hold, you know, there's no point me being a motocross coach and me sat here being mm. a fat, overweight. What are you trying to say? You know, I'm not looking at you, Bob. He was looking at me <laughs> when he said that. But I want to lead by example as best I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I trained as a PT. I'm a level four PT. So my job is an all round, you know, I do the physical side of things. Like say, we, we have our cycle camp every year in Mallorca. I was out with Ben and Nathan Watson yesterday cycling their machines on a bike. It's a nice no. little prelude to what we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we'll be doing next that next. With the, yeah. the next Let's episode. sign off with this then. Um, you've already loosely kind of mentioned it. Any any obvious regrets or none at all or anything just 
mild regrets where you think, oh, maybe if I'd have just done that. Or you don't hang on them. No. I, I Clearly, yeah. I know that's not your personality. No. Um, but just looking back, was there a few moments, you know, like where... Because you were always known as a talented kid. Yeah. You had the speed, no question about yeah. it. But maybe not the dedication. Well, it we, didn't look that way we, from the outside. No, it doesn't look that way, but it's, you know. not being a dick. No, no, no. That was no, the way no, it totally, looked from the outside. You were having fun. Yeah, no, I, 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 you know, did I burn the candle at both ends? You couldn't race at the level that we were. And not have a pressure valve. And, right? and, and not be also, you know, dedicated. Yeah. So, you know, it, it you know. I'm, it was the 90s as well. It was the nineties, but <laughs> but no, I, I, I come on. We had I some fun on those road well, we trips. Did. <laughs> we did, you know. There's there's some. Yeah, yeah that's, that's did we do the have whole... kids watching this. Yeah, so no, that, that was the other thing because you know we didn't fly yeah, we, to race. We didn't fly to races. Did no, we? you drive. We drove. I was lucky enough when I did ride. Yeah, for when you, you were flying at that point, that, but we did. early part but, of the yeah. GP no, we we were all road tripping. Yeah, we were road tripping. And that first time, me and you took the bus down. We were going to France. I want to say. And like we'd got 15 miles from your house in Sarnicester, smashed the wing mirrors clean off. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and that oh, was another quiet the, drive. Wasn't it? Trip, we were laughing, but we're like, there are no wing mirrors but on this we, great big <laughs> Winnebago. And I'm like, <laughs> and it's going over this little bridge by Sarnicester. I'm like, oh, 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 poof. I'm like, fuck. I was like 18 years of age. And I remembered <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd lost my driving license. And, um, I got too many points or whatever it was. I don't know when I was showing you. Okay, so you lost it, as in didn't yeah. displace it. No, yeah. lost, they no got, I took actually lost it. You got it took off it. Yeah. I was yeah. quite quick to lose my job. I've lost it three t twice. Um, but I remember my mechanic at the time, Kev, um, we kind of like devised this thing where um, if if he was sat in the driver's seat and I had the steering wheel and my feet on the pedals, it wouldn't be classified as driving. And we were abroad. <laughs> And he was asleep on the passenger, on the driver's on the dri seat, Never. and I'm driving like that. Really? Because we had to get to an international Yeah, well, we race. used to swap out drivers. Yeah, all the time. I remember me, stop. Merv, and Merv's yeah, brother. Yeah. We, we were doing we 15 rotate. minutes each. We were that knackered. Yeah. And you would stand up. Yeah. yeah. Swing, yeah. swing across. Somebody over the back of the seat, and then you were ready for the be, next we'd session. We'd be out for nine, ten weeks earning good money. Uh, that's standard racing. fodder, though, that's, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. Doing that kind of thing. Of course, there was all midweek internationals that we yeah. don't have now. Yeah, but kids don't have that now, do they? No, they no. don't. Everything's a different They haven't got a sort. chance to earn money like we do. No, that's no. true. So, and it used to be weird. You'd go out for like five or six weeks, two or three Grand Prix, mm -hmm. two or three, four internationals. Yeah. And like, you'd have to take enough stuff to last. But I was like 15 doing that and paying for my mechanic. Yeah. I, I was a self-sufficient business. And it's an education 15. on the road, isn't it? Oh, mate. I mean, booking and that's when it was up. And that's going around with no cell phones, yeah. Yeah. working off maps, no sat yeah. nav. We're not saying it's better in our day, but it, no. it does seem a lot no. easier now than it ever was. Can but we I say think... a lot of X things or not on here, but you know, like. Excellent. Trying to, you know, ex, like things like trying to get away with not paying for stuff oh, and stuff gosh, like that. Shocking. Shocking. Can. Ferry tickets were a shock. <laughs> how, how them companies didn't go bust. I've been in yeah, some situations. God, of course we can say those things. I don't know how many fake. So uh, you can say what you want, but uh, not right. school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fake credit cards going through tolls. Yeah. Uh, you name yeah, it, yeah, Robin Fuel, siphoning We diesel. traded. We've yeah. had this conversation it's before. It's an education. You traded on like stickers, like motocross stickers and but check borders. Was amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. The check come border. back. Come back. Come back. <laughs> all the but crystal, at the race as well. All the crystal I used to have. My mum absolutely loved me. I know. Every I remember time. I was working yeah. on the bike one time and the bloke's got this big punch bowl with I'm like, what's that? He's like, Jersey. And I'm thinking, Listen, put it big in the old bowl. dirty bag. In <laughs> yeah. So I'm just in, it's Billy Lars, it was. Yeah. I'm in his bag just ripping out of. And he's like, yeah. where's all my gear gone? I'm like, I've got a load of those glass, though. Yeah. And and Vernier calipers. They were making them there oh, somewhere. So I had a few of them as well. Honest to God. It's mad, it's mad to even think that, there, that the borders were actually, you know, kids were listening now, if they are, what do you mean borders? You know, you actually had to mm. physically stop at borders. I oh, remember yeah. being at... People at the, mowed at the, carnets the, back then. But yeah. Jesus, that oh, was a regular lifestyle. I remember that being stopped was. at the check one, one time and, and the, the guard sort of saw us, came up with his AK-47 thinking, oh, yeah. no, we're banging Here trouble. We Pulled us to one side. Someone All he wanted was some stickers, stickers and he got the last track through. I know, yeah. it's mental. Going back to the regrets thing there, let's that, finish that, off that, on that. I want a story let's... about Benny Lyles though. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> come on, come on, let's hear it again. I remember hey, we this were ain't going to be one hour of this. <laughs> no, no, I, no, we always go. We were going, because that like, like, Billy was an American, but he didn't have any visas or nothing. He just used to come into Belgium. He smashed that himself was, off pits oh, yeah. uh, Asti big time that year. And then... Was it Asti? This was 94, I want to say. Yeah. And we're driving from Germany into 
like Eastern Germany. So it was like Eastern Bloc. Yeah. We go to Czechia or somewhere. And he's got nothing, has he? has got no visa or nothing. So we've just gone and showed the passport. The bloke's like, nope, no visa. You've got to go over there and get paperwork. We're like, what? And, you know, you go in them horrible offices with all the truckers smoking and you're oh. vile. And I remember being in there giving it, what are we going to do about this? So I walked back to the truck and the truck, this bloke's watched me. And I remember like on the dash, you always had the time training sheets, didn't you? Yeah. Just don't know why that nobody ever threw them away, but there was yeah. always. <laughs> and so I bat three or four of them, put them in my pocket, walked across the office, had a piss, walking back across, he's watching me and I've got these papers out of my pocket and I've waved them at him. <laughs> And he's let us through, didn't even look at them. They were only time training sheets. And I'm thinking, we could have been proper arrested doing that, you know. It was yeah. proper naughty, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? Oh, but <laughs> We've got to get out of the country yet, mind. Oh, That's got, the classic. Hey, got, <laughs> that's like putting like a 50 quid note around a bundle of paper just oh, to look I've like you've got... Have we got time for one? Yeah, yeah we've got time, kid. That's why they want over here. My, one of my... I don't know if it's a highlight or not. I don't know where to start <laughs> with this. But I was writing for, um, for Embo. And well, that's an education I, in itself. I'm that sure. yeah. is an education. So we just did Lockit, and obviously Lockit's quite renowned for a few things. Um, but we had a really good weekend there. Really good weekend. I think we ended up like I don't know four or five or something like that. Anyway, there's a beautiful town down the road called Calavari. Yeah. So Calavari is where they film Casino Royale and all that. Embo's like, come on, Ace, let's get down there and let's have a real good. <laughs> scran up and stuff like that. And my mechanic at the time was Graham. Graham. <laughs> I I got on all right, Graham. He was Penfold, his name Penfold. Was. But I, Penfold. Think, I, 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 I think I might have started that. But anyway, but anyway, I think it was me that started that nickname. Anyway, Sorry, so Graham. We've, no, he's a cracking guy. And uh, so we've gone down there, had a really good night out. On the way back, you got Susanna's down the road. <laughs> so, come on, you can't, don't you me can't tell half so of me now. Says, it's on me, son. <laughs> like this, right? <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, it's um, a lady of the night's place, and it's right at the end. I, I, I haven't been to Lockett for a few years, so I don't even. <laughs> but motocrossers are quite, quite pronounced, of you know, rowdy, yeah. And, and yeah, we yeah. like to go to areas like that where we did back in the nineties. Anyway, for yourself. So we've we've. I'm in this brand new. <laughs> It's been anyway, I, I, I didn't. No, I'm just awful looking place. after everybody awful, else. So anyway, I'm I'm in this Ugh. brand new hire car, right? That I've I couldn't get a flight to check, so I had to go to Germany. So I've got this brand new Polo, and I've driven it across the border, which I wasn't meant Not to, supposed do. to do. Yeah. So I'm in. I'm now. I'm now in. I'm now driving back from Calavari. And I'm flat out back to things because I don't know if it's going to shut or not or whatever. But anyway, I've overshot it, right? All the bright lights, you name it. So I thought, right, what am I going to do here now? So I'm, I'm going at probably 60, 70 on mile an hour. I've honked on the handbrake, right? It's a gravel road. I'm sliding down the road like this. Anyway, Graham's quite a large unit. And obviously it's hooked up, right? And this hire car's gone, whoom! Straight across, right? You know, these cornfields, you know, all the farmers, they have all these like troughs all the way around the outside yeah, for yeah. drainage and stuff. So I've launched across one of those. I'm in the cornfield now in this hire car and I can't see anything. Corn no. is well, what six, people eight don't eight understand foot. when that goes down, the noise. Oh, the mate. noise. <laughs> you're just like, and it's like so an assault I, on the senses. So, and it's quite, it, obviously, it's, it's quite wet in there. So I've like. <laughs> Well, well, if you've, have you, obviously, you've yes. had your... Yeah. Yes. Anyway, yes. it was quite a thing back then in hire cars, wasn't it? Oh, you have to. It's part of the... Yeah. You know, you, so the way it goes. And it's quite wet and on under the wheel, so I'm... I you can't, can't stop. You can't, you can't, I can't stop. Off. No, you're sinking. So I'm now lit around this cornfield, not to turn too Trying tight. Trying to find the road. So I am like, why this hire car? It's just getting I'm, worse. All I keep an eye out, out of is it's the, the lights. lights. You're, that's so I'm like, right, I'm just heading back to the lights. I can't see nothing by a corn. So anyway, I've, I've come out and all of a sudden the cornfield's finished like this and there's one of those tractor little bridges that go across. I'm like, oh, oh sound, straight that? in, boom, straight into Suzanne. Is it yeah. Suzanne? It was... S S I don't know. Some no, S. I don't think... what began with an S. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically. Anyway, right. That's when they called him Two-Time this... Tony from there. There was a lot of... Yeah. Straight out of one door into another. Yeah. yeah. Two-Time Tony. Anyway, right. Apparently. I, um, <laughs> I've, I've stopped... <laughs> trying to think of the name now you carry on anyway right i've stopped i've got out and mate 
I didn't realise how bad this hire car was. The bumper's down. I've ripped the sump out of the thing and oh. the radiator's gone. Oh. Right. So I'm like, well, right, done a good I, job on my it. flight is at six o'clock next morning. So I'm like, look, what are we going to do here, guys? Well, I'm in the right pickle here. So anyway, we've obviously priority straight in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll worry about it in a minute. Don't bit. worry about that for the moment. Let's get in there. Job done, out. Right, now, Graham, this is what we're going to do. You're going to give me as much engine oil as you've got in the motorhome. Yeah. And all the bottles of water that we've got and fill up everything. They fill up. Everything. So the back seat of this brand new Polo <laughs> has got more engine oil than you could ever imagine, more water than you could ever imagine, <laughs> mate. And now I've gone, right, okay, I'm heading off. It's like three in the morning. I'm going now because I don't know how, how this is going to end up. No. So – I'm, I've got to the border every half an hour, filling up with oil, filling up with engine oil, and filling up with water. water. Have to. Then it get across the border. What are you doing here? Da, da, da. Anyway, yeah. I've got me FIM license. I'm racing. The, uh, anyway, they again just you know I'll go on. Just get yeah, going. Yeah, the more never, asshole never, you are, the yeah, they let you through. I, I, I wore all my racing gear as well. I got all changed in that. Forgot to tell you that. But <laughs> anyway, it's, the sun's coming up. And I've had enough now filling this damn car up with oil and water. <laughs> so you're just like sod it, it'll be all So right. I've seen this Aral garage in Germany and I'm like, right, all the lights are now gone on flat out. And this thing, I've seized it going down the <laughs> off ramp and I've rolled it all the way in. Well, we've only, I don't know how long we'd had mobile phones, but we had so I've Not rang, really I've rang Eurocar and said, look. Told him your car's knackered. I said, there's an electrical fault in the car, the the boot, the boot's full of water and oil, plus a front bumper, plus other bits. I said, there's an electrical fault with the car. Sorry. It's left at this. Garage. No, not a problem, Mr. Morris. Just get yourself to the next Euro depot. And I'm thinking, right, okay. So it's now like 8 o'clock in the morning. I've got to sort myself out here because I'm going to get that car. They're going to realise that that is an absolute write-off. So I've cancelled all my credit cards. Right. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? Um, no. So I've driven then to <laughs> to the airport, then. to the airport, and I'm thinking, well, if I if I check this car in, it's going to be a problem. Then then, then that's going to flash out because then now they would have reported this car's coming back to the airport. Yeah, yeah. So I've gone straight into the departures, got my bags out, left my keys under the windscreen under oh. the uh, sun visor. Got on a plane and just went home, and they sent me bills for thousands for years, and in the end, they just right. came. Up. <laughs> Clearly, when I asked him, has he got any regrets? That's not one of them. No, no that's that, a that was that was story. that was good. That was good. All right, I need well, a wee. Well, Wobs needs a wee. Um, so look, we're going to come back because uh, we've still got plenty to talk to Justin about. In fact, what he's doing now, coaching riders, whatever. So that will be in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. This one uh, again. Thanks to Talon. Uh, Wobs, before you go for a wee. Um, do you want to, obviously, you've oh, got yeah, yeah, some got big a, events. Yeah, we've got Foxhill and Farley know. coming up. So we've got Foxhill, the dates are announced, coming 21st, up, 24th of August. Never stops, kid. Never stops. Yeah. Spectator tickets are going to be out middle of November. Yeah. But Ride of Entry is going to be the first first weekend of December. Yeah. So get tied up. That's going to be good. Farley Castle, 13th, 14th of September. Entries will be February time. So don't worry about that. We've got plenty of time for that one. Yeah. So and plenty of time to announce riders. So yeah, on, yeah. So we've forth. got a few really big names already. So it's quality. I'm not going. Hold no, on, hold not. on. Hold on. Our wonderful director is putting her hand in the air like we've forgotten something, Wobs. No, no, we haven't. What I need is a wee, so I'm done. Well, that's probably the best place to sign this one off. Um, we'll see you again soon. Coming back for more with Justin Morris in a future episode. Thanks for tuning in.